Hi guys, welcome to Scott in Mexico. My family and I are moving there for a period of time to seek out some new adventures. And we wanted to uh, share our journey with you. It hasn't been super easy, but I just wanted to start from the beginning. Okay, well, let's dive in. A little bit of a background. We decided that we would bring forward what was to be our retirement plans in, in basically age 55, right? Things happened in 2020, 2021, and are still going on in the world, and you, you have to be living under a rock to not know. Change the, the, the face of everything, especially travel. So travel has become very different, very disjointed, not easy, quite expensive at the moment as well. But we thought that because we realized that, you know, we have less control of our lives than we all previously thought, we should potentially bring forward some of those plans to sort of have a hybrid, you know, work lifestyle balance. So we chose Mexico. Now, there's a couple of reasons we chose Mexico. Good weather, basically. Nice people, good food, uh, reasonable exchange rate, so, so cheap. And also, they didn't lock people down in, in relation to, you know, pandemic things. So, what that meant for us was, in theory, because I w we would hate to have our family in a country and not see any of it, be locked in a hotel room or locked in a house or locked in a rental. So that, that didn't make sense to us. So we, we sought out countries that fit these other criteria, but also didn't weren't part of that harsh control over human beings. I mean, there's a few, and, and a lot in Africa and Latin America, you know, fit that bill. And we chose Mexico. Once we decided to do that, we started researching and then we realized that, okay, we've got to go and apply for a visa. Now we chose to not to do a, a holiday visa because if we were there over and we actually overrun the holiday visa, now you go, Scott, why would you overrun the holiday visa? You'd have to be an idiot. Unless your country, for some reason, if there was like some secondary pandemic, decided that they weren't going to let their own citizens return, which happened in my country called Australia. You know, back in 2020, citizens that were abroad, if they're either working or seeing family or on holidays, were told, shelter in place, don't move, you know, stay where you are, it's okay, just stay, shelter in place for two weeks, and then we'll sort it out. And then the government said, you know what, no one's coming back in, stay where you are, if you're running out of money, we don't care, it's your, whatever, we're not doing it, we're pulling up the drawbridge, right, we've got to protect the people that are still on, on, on home soil. Now, you would think that there would be a massive, massive backlash from the citizens in Australia. You'd think that they would have just, you know, been rallying at the government saying, you can't do that to fellow Australians. They're, that's what the passport is. That's what it means to be a citizen. You should be allowed to come back to your own country. But they didn't. Instead, they, the, kind of the, murmuring, the murmurs and the, and the rumblings were, well, they knew the risks when they went on holidays overseas. But really? Really? You know, so it was Australia, China, North Korea, and I think Lithuania might have been the four countries that refused to let their citizens re-enter. So because we come from Australia, we could not be in a country where if this, or in Mexico, if this happened, and Australia decided they weren't going to let the citizens back, and we were on a tourist visa and we overstayed our visa in Mexico, we'd probably end up in prison or continually bribing people to stay, right? So we said, to be safe, we better apply for a temporary residence visa. Now, a temporary residence visa comes with some good things. You can open bank accounts. You can get loans for vehicles. You can actually, uh, it's, a, it's a closer step to getting a job if you wanted to. And it, it is a pathway to permanent residency, which is eventually a pathway to citizenship. And they allow second citizenships. And so potentially your country does as well. And Australia does too. So it ticked a lot of boxes there. And I thought, this just makes a whole lot of sense for us. Let's apply for a temporary residence visa um, in, in Mexico. And then we go over there similar to a holiday, but if we get caught, we're okay. We're allowed to stay for basically four years, realistically. So we just thought that was what, that was our, our plan. And we decided that probably just before Christmas and then we were going to do that um, early in 2022. So it is a bit of a process. The process is that you have to apply in person at an embassy of the, of, of the Mexican consulate embassy in your country or in another country that is not on Mexican soil. It cannot be in Mexico. You can't go to Mexico and do this. You have to do this in your country, generally your country. You might be able to do it in a, in a, in a secondary country, but not Mexico, right? So, okay, no worries. 
there's only one in our country, so we have to fly down to Canberra from from basically Brisbane. You know, a couple hour flight and do lots of and do some paperwork and things. Now, to do that, the only way that you can get an appointment in, in, at, at the moment is to use their online booking system, which doesn't work well. It's it's a ter- it's a terrible system. It has all sorts of problems, and you've got to go and book in. The problem is bookings are like three months in advance, and so when you start doing all these things, it takes time, and it's, like, it's a bit of a long, long drawn out journey. Bit of a plan, right? So we went down to the Mexican consulate, and you can see it here. We've got, finally got our booking appointment, and we're going to put the link up to the booking site. And guys, one of the things we made we made a big error on was there's three of us, and we just you basically apply together. So I made a 45 minute appointment slot in the booking portal. What they really wanted was three slots back to back because there's three people in your application. And that's actually just about impossible on their booking site. We didn't do that. I realized we'd made the error. I had to ring them up, tried to get through them. It took me probably two or three weeks to get through them. The phone just rang out, but just didn't answer it. Eventually started getting through some people and also then started emailing some people and started getting some correspondence. And they said, okay, we'll make an exception for your family. We understand. We understand you made an error and... You know, you finally got an appointment in February. Um, the next one's in May 2022 if you miss this one. So we'll make an exception. So that was really good, um, David and the guys down at the Mexican concert in Canberra. So that was that was really helpful. But since so a family of you, you know, it was two or three or four, then you've kind of got to make a big slot in their days, you know, back-to-back little, you know, sections on their portal. And you're not always going to get that. So it's not easy. So if you're thinking about this, I would start trying to book the appointment right now. If, if you want to do this in the future, this is what you got to do. Okay, now some of the ways to get in to, to apply and be successful under a temporary residence visa is generally that, that you're that you're there as a person to be sought after for your skill sets. Maybe you're a professor or you know musician or something. Generally, most people are going, or, or you've got some family family sort of connections to Mexico. You have got to prove those family connections, like like your family live there, basically that you just don't you haven't lived there. Um, we've gone under a thing called economic solvency. So economic solvency says that you need to show that you will have an income stream, residual income stream really. So not from, you can't have really have a work unless you can prove that you're gonna be maybe a digital nomad. And you gotta prove for the past you know, six months, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, that equals a multiple of, of um, the Mexican uh, minimum daily pay rate for, for their skill set. And this changes quite a, quite a bit and it changes, obviously it's going to change with the currency too because it's a multiple of the Mexican you know, um, income, not your currency's income. So it really adjusts all, all the time. For us, it was probably about five or $6,000 a month um, because there's three of us. And so what you can do is if you have a business like we do, and I said, well, my wife has has also another job, but we're obviously not doing that. However, our income from the business, our residual income from our investments can actually sustain three people. So the formula changes a little bit and it was probably about five or $6,000 Australian at the time with the way the exchange rate worked. So you'd think that'd be pretty easy, right? That felt pretty easy. Now, if you're, if you're a self-employed person like me and you've got a whole lot of other investments and entities and companies and trusts going on, you're always shifting money across and doing bits and pieces like that. And yeah, you know, tax strategies, asset protection strategies, all the things that we say are, are really great strategies to do and important, and they are. However, when you get to the Mexican consulate, you've got to show statements with that, that they can easily read that, that prove that you have economic solvency. And when you start bringing in statements of companies and trusts, and they just like kind of their eyes glaze over. It's not what they want. They do not want this, that. And they said to us, this, this, this is not really what okay. we want. It's not really what we want at all. Now, we, we'd had a bit of a heads up that this might be the case. And so we, we also tried to tick a box that was like, hey, you've got enough money to sustain yourself for two or three or four years as well. Just like in a lump sum that had been sitting there for a 12 month period. So six months of cash flow, 12 months of capital, you know, just money in the bank. And it was probably about $75,000 Australian at, at the time. Um, and we didn't have that for 12 months period, but I just sort of show, I was trying to show it to them, you know, like extra to make them feel more comfortable. And we, you know, and so we, we, we looked at them and went, okay, we're going to have to bring in to try and make sure we add up all these in residual incomes that look like, you know, positive income coming through. 
We had about eight different entities bank accounts, six months statements. We'd highlighted all these little bits and pieces to try and add, add them up. And then, we, then um, yeah, my, my PA, who is just uh, yeah, is, is a great human being, she assisted me and, and we did like um, almost like a spreadsheet of the accounts and, and all the adding ups and proving that we'd had this income. And I kind of thought it'd be, uh, you know, a lay down the Z like, because we, we were showing income that was well above the multiple that they wanted to have. What we also said, you know, because because I had all these entities and the way that the form reads is, is it was was quite, uh, or the, the information that I got from them, from the consulate, it was hard to read. It was hard to understand. And I said to some sort of immigration lawyers who were, in theory, were helping us, but I don't know. I think they got paid for nothing at this at this league realistically, was, okay, well, I'm reading this three of us, then we've each got to show solvencies. So it's meant my, my wife, you know, myself and my nine-year-old boy. You know, so what, we've got to show solvency for each of us? Does that mean triplicate of everything? And they <laughs> and they said, yeah, prob probably, probably. So we ended up, <laughs> we ended up with like folders, like three big folders, like a triplicate of everything and we had them and everything has to be JP'd, JP certified. So I had my PA who's a JP here like two weekends running, just stamping and signing, stamping and signing and helping me put in. And she, you know what, again, great human being. She loved doing it, but just a pain in the ass, realistically. And we, it was just crazy. So like it fitted all into like two suitcases, two little carry-on suitcases, paperwork that we're going to go to the consulate and, and do this thing and prove who we are. You know, IDs, passport, current passports, all issues, all issues that we had to do. So it was really, it was tricky. It was really tricky to do. And then we, and so we finally got this, all these bundles up and we'd had our appointment time. So, you know, we booked our flight a couple weeks in advance, you know, to fly down to Canberra, stay down there, you know, go to the consulate for our appointment and then hopefully come home. You know, with with our temporary visas intact in our passports. Two weeks out, we realised our son's passport would run out. Excuse me, why? Less than six months of the day, we might be awarded our temporary visa. And that's one of the criteria is your passport needs to be a duration of more than six months. And so we're like, oh crap, this is bad, oh, this no. is really bad. And we raced around to try and get an express passport and pay the express passport fee and it still wasn't ready in time. So we ran the concert and explained our problem. They were really good. Again, um, you know, Mr. David, he was great. He was a great man. He said, look, come down, bring his old passport. So, and obviously bring him and we'll do all the paperwork. And then you can ma mail the passport down to, to the consulate when, you, when it arrives to you. And then we'll slot in the paperwork and do everything and everything will get finalized. And we thought that was pretty good, pretty good situation. Now you're mailing your passport down. So this, this is kind of a bit scary, you know, like, but you send it registered. <laughs> and so we, so we finally, you know, finally got on, onto our plane. We didn't have crew, my, my boy's name is crew. We didn't have crew's passport. So Lena and I had two big carry-on bags with all paperwork. It was just a little bag for our, for our clothes and stuff. We just got these folders. We we're going to walk to the consulate from where we were staying in camera. It wasn't far away. Now our, our and it was like finally we got there the day. You know, it was like it was a lot of effort and a lot of paperwork and a lot of a lot of oh no, we're really nervous, right? We've got to we've got to sit there. We dressed well, we dressed well. Like you know, we didn't overdress it. Uh, it wasn't a tie or anything like that. But I put a jacket on, jacket and shirt. Finally get to the Mexican concert. Nice looking building with, with just you know some some different artwork and, and things that that you know Maya and, and uh, you know that that sort of Aztec sort of look. It was, it was great and. You see the, see the photos there, it's a, it's a nice place to go. They were actually having uh, some ceremonial day as well. And so they were dressed in, some of the guys were dressed in mil like really like high level military things, like high ranking stuff and they were swords and things. And they were having this, uh, they had like a uh, an outside paved area, courtyard style. And they were having something going on there with a the flag going up and you know national anthem and things. So I'm not sure what day it was, but it was interesting to be there and watch that. So that was pretty cool. And then our appointment was for 9.30. 9.30, boom. Yep, cool. We're there at quarter past nine. We're probably starting to, you know, play, we're pulling all this paperwork out, paperwork, paperwork. And this lady just went, what the hell are you doing? These folders, folders. And she said, oh, 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 oh. Because every folder you open up, had like tabs, you know, all these bank accounts and all these six-month statements and everything's JP certified, you know, like a possible. And it was just a big pile of paper. And she went, oh, 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 my God, oh, my God. What are you doing? And we're like, well, this is... What we were told to do, you, you know, we were kind of told this, this is the this is the information we've been getting. I've got, you know, uh, solvency proven for each human being 
And she's like, no, 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 no. Just a, just a primary applicant proves solvency and everyone just sort of attaches to them. We could have had it once. Even though the immigration lawyer said, yeah, you probably should do it triplicate. You should probably do it three times because it's three of you. So that, and this is the immigration lawyers based in Mexico, right? So this is the, this is a, you know, information that doesn't flow through. And what I've since found out is that every Mexican concert in every different country has different, a little bit different criteria, some harder on you for, for solvency proof, some are easier. So that's really interesting. So it comes back to this theory of nothing is standardized and it's the human beings that you get on the day and the culture of that one consulate somewhere else. You know, I'm, I'm hearing Miami in, in Florida is, is, is quite um, a more liberal one to get. Canberra felt okay. Um, there might be some other countries that are very harsh, right? So it was okay. And so in theory, we were told that, you know, we would stay there for, you know, in getting in, have our appointment. And then by the end of the day, you know, we would walk out with our visas. And that was already cool. We'd send crew's passport down and eventually then his visa would come back in his new passport. So that was okay. We were sitting there. It probably took about two hours. So our appointment's at 9.30. We probably got in about quarter to 12. And that felt a bit strange to us because it's so strict on the booking system. But since found out, you know, um, Mexico or Latin America, it is a different rhythm. It is a different vibe. And I actually think that'll be a nice place to live in. Um, sounds like getting paperwork done in government agencies is just like from back in the 80s in, in Australia. So it's going to be slow and everything's in triplicate. Nothing happens too fast. And, you know, the, for example, the Mexican consulate officially shuts for about an hour to two hours every day for lunch. Obviously, yes, that's what they do, right? So nothing's happening too fast. Um, that's okay. Look, met some, met some great people down there waiting while we're there waiting and they'll do the same thing and they'll, they'll go and getting a temporary residence to move to and work in, in Mexico as well. We eventually get in, in into our appointment and um, sort of put our paperwork in front of, you know, the, the guy who's, who's assessing us. And he started, he was like, oh, yeah, oh, you know, this is coming, this is, your money's earned inside trusts and companies. We really like to see it in your own name, makes it easy for us. Like, because company this and company that, you might have money going out of the company, how do we tell? You know, this, how I tell you, you own it, and then I, then I, show him, I showed him the share certificates and, and the, the certificate, certificate of corporation showing that we're the directors, therefore we have control, it was all, it was all JP certified, and he's like, well, okay. Then there was a trust deed, we showed him the trust deed, the addendum to the trust deed, JP certified every page, all this stuff, he's like, well, okay, I don't really understand how that works, but, you know, he said, leave it with me, leave it with me, leave it with me, oh, yeah, yeah, that's okay, we'll think about it later. And then we got fingerprinted and he, he asked us, uh, you know, fingerprinted our boy and that sort of thing. And he said, why do you want to go to Mexico? Why? Why? Why, why, why are you doing this? Um, which is good. You know, it's, it's, it's a fair question to ask. Why do you want to go to my country? And, and you know, we, we said one of the real reasons, actually, was we want to experience a new culture and meet new people, we want, you know, as opposed to the culture that we're used to in Australia, which is slightly cultureless. And so that, and that was, that was fair enough. And he said, where, where are you going to stay? What town? You've obviously done your research. And so you need to have an answer to that question, actually. Don't just turn up and go, oh, whatever. And we, we said where we looked at and our, our, some of our research had led to Merida on the Yucatan, um, which is kind of, you know, towards Cancun and sort of that, that area. And he was happy with that. He said, look, you're sleeping with me. I should have it back to you by the, by the day. Go back to your hotel room and that's okay. Like, you know, I'll call you. You can come and collect it. But that's okay because we're staying in the next day. We'd, we'd allowed a day for that. Uh, nothing. We didn't hear him back to the hotel room, you know, pretty stressed out. We, we were excited, but we knew we hadn't, you know, we'd made some errors perhaps and things didn't go smooth. Uh, and no call. And so I said, okay, we're not, don't want to annoy them. They were busy. Plus, I forgot I had to have siesta. And the next day, I rang up about lunchtime because we hadn't heard anything. We're getting on a plane that afternoon. I'm like, hey, guys, just like, not really thought you were going to, you know, what? Same day kind of service, I'm not seeing it. And like, oh, we were so busy, we had 10, 10 applications, you know. So next week, course next week, should be next week. <laughs> and this went on for a bit, it ended up being two and a bit weeks. And, you know, I'd called, called back and hadn't heard anything next week. And on, the, on you know, the very start of the third week, I just, they just turned up, uh, turned up in the mail. Sorry, in between that, we'd, we had, because Cruise passport. We're back in Toowoomba. Cruise passport actually turned up, so we posted it down. Like, hey, just let you know, 
just like, you know, we we put the password down. Um, any news on our application? Oh no, well, I'm not sure. You know, that's someone else doing that. I'm like, okay, okay. And then we'll call you and we'll call you and let you know. We'll call you and let you know. There was no call. There was no call. Um, three passwords just turned up in the mail one day, and inside the page was the was the page for the temporary residence visa application where where you get it inside your passport. So that was pretty crazy, and that was that was approved on the 9th of March. Now. That's only part one. Part two says you've got to get to Mexican soil within six months of that day. So for us, the day was, was March 9, and therefore September 9 is, is where that goes to, all right? And so you go, okay, you've got to get to Mexico then. Now, everyone's got family and businesses and work and things, and we've got to have a whole lot of stuff to sort out. I still wanted to, I wanted to leave and be out of here uh, in the mid, mid-May. I wanted to leave before the federal election in Australia. I just thought that was a good time. The new government was coming in. Who knows what was going to happen? I just thought it was a good time. It was before winter, before any new crazy um, flu on steroids was going to knock people over and things might happen. I wanted to get out. We couldn't swing it. We finally, we finally been able to swing it. And so we're shooting off on June 20th, not directly to US and, and Mexico. We've had to be forced just with the way the world works. We've got to go backwards. Got to go go through um, Thailand, then London, then Mexico. That's what that's that's the jump we're doing, and we're spacing it out because that would kill us. That would that would, that would just absolutely kill us. So we're trying to make the, the best of a bad situation of having to fly a long long path. So that's okay. So what happens then is I've tried to get on and knowing where we're going to land, and, and we're going to land in Mexico in you know the first week of July. So I'm trying to get on and trying to make appointments, and I've, I've been ringing the, the immigration lawyers in, in Mexico City and saying, "Hey, we're on, we're good to go. You know, paid you some money, guys. Like, just just let me know I'm going to get to use you for your know, services for that, for that day we've put down." They said, "Oh, well, uh, the booking site that you normally use to book an appointment is under construction, so you have to wait." And I said, "Okay, no worries. Where were the appointments pushed out to?" And he said, "Oh, look, last week of July." And I'm like, "Okay, so." When we land on Mexican soil, when do we have to have the next stage done? We can get a little driver's license, temporary residence card, inside 30 days. If you did not get it done inside 30 days, he said, legally, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to start the process from step one again. That, that would have meant going back to Australia. To start all that again. So like this is critical time, critical part. And so we're stressing, stressing, stressing. I'll keep eating, you know, for, for the next weeks and weeks and weeks. I'm like, hey, have you guys been able to make this appointment? Is the booking site up yet? No, it's not, Scott. We'll let you know what it is. Hey, you know, I wouldn't hear from these guys for a week as well. And so we've got we've got the first step done, March 9. We've got to be there before September, which is fine. But but in, where we want to get to is before winter. And you've got to have an appointment inside 30 days booked in where you're going to land. And ours was Mexico City. So this is really, this was just stressing, stressing, stress, stressing us out. It was a stressful period. And I said, okay, look, we've got past that. And eventually the, the lawyers have gone, guess what? And we're like, what? They're not using the booking system anymore. It's too fraught with danger. People would make appointments online and never turn up. And so it was just mayhem. So now what you've got to do, turn up on the day, like in the morning, a bit like a bread line, old, old school Soviet bread line, and see if you can get in. Just see if you can get in. Just that, 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 That'll be it. And we're like, oh, man, that's really stressful. He said, no, 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 but, but because you're with us, because you paid us thousands of dollars, when you land, we'll make the appointment straight away and you'll probably take a week or so. So I'm like, okay, it's, thank goodness you're going to start earning your money, basically, and, and just make sure we can get through that. So I was like, oh, okay, great. Right, guys, anything, anything you've got, we've got to know. And those and those sense of form said, when, <laughs> it was like, okay, cool, you know, it sounds like it's going to be like, you know, 12th or 13th of, of July, hopefully. Hopefully that that's it. So we... We should be able to tick that box. So that's great. That's great. And we said to the lawyers, is there anything else we need to know? Is there anything else we need to bring? We're only going to have a passport. It's not really going to have a marriage certificate, which is an, which is problematic because it's actually a Thailand marriage certificate. So that was never going to fly, actually. Believe it or not. Uh, and they went, oh, look, we're sending you a form. We're sending you a form. Um, this is the form that they're going to do at the immigration at the airport. See this little box down here? If the guy stuffs it up, and you don't tear the phone up and get it, and like this, the immigration guy, if he doesn't tick that particular box and put 30 days, if, it, if that goes wrong, if he misunderstands what you're talking about, it's all over. You have to start again. You go back to Australia, start again, basically. It's, you know, yeah, you, they can try and kind of usurp it and go, but it's all, it could be this huge, long bureaucratic process to, to fix up what was an easy mistake at the airport. So we've studied this form, <laughs> studied this form yeah, very, very quickly. 
So that's okay. So then that's we haven't left yet. We're, we're leaving Australia in a couple of days. This, this is what's happened so far. You know, for people who want to have a little bit more in-depth understanding of actually those few little errors and things that we made at the console in Australia. It potentially could be very similar in your console, wherever you are. There's not, if you're in Australia, there's only one. It's in Canberra. Um, or, or some other you know troubles and things that we've had to sort of you know get through and, and navigate and haven't been super easy. Um, look, just leave a comment down below and um, we'll get back and, re and reply to you. So I mean, today we, we, we did our uh, rat test because 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 we're going through Thailand, we have to have a negative uh, rat test inside a 72 hour window. Um, so there's no quarantine things. Download the Thai pass, and so we did that today. Uh, went went to a chemist, and you can see <laughs> you can see. You see a bit of footage of there. We got shoved in this little room, this little kind of, you know, makeshift little area of the chemist for you. You know, with, with little, you know, curtain walls up, you know, privacy curtains, so to speak, while we're sticking things up our nose. And crew, you can see there, is doing a spit into a little, little bucket, the coffin spit, you know, rat test. Um, we had to make sure we had our passports with us so that um, the chemist could do the, fill out the form correctly. So it's a professional rat test, as in the rat trust you do on home, which I, I understand. Um, and we just went through that, so it was all clear. So we got that, so it was super, super, yeah, excited. That was the last stress of, of are we going to get through the gate, you know, basically. And then yesterday they dropped masks at airports in Australia, which is amazing. The airlines are asking to, if, if we can come back with the rest of the world in, in this century and drop masks on airplanes because they're just theatre. That's that's irrelevant. So so that's really good. So we can, get, we can fly down to Sydney. Um, you know, on Chris Fly through to Singapore, transit through Singapore to Bangkok. Bit of time in Bangkok, see some and and down in Chomburi, down seeing some people we know, which is really good. Catch up, taking boy shower, showing some of the places that I love, my old haunts. I love to, love to visit. Thai Airways on to um, into UK. Yeah, that's really good. No requirements to get in the UK. Um, no vaccination requirements. No mask requirements. No no testing requirements. Because they're normal, because it's great, and that's how it should be. So a little bit, of, so rock up in London for a week or so, and then we'll do an overnighter to Mexico. No vaccine requirements, no, no, uh, no ma no mask really around there at the airport. You will have to, but no test seat needed either, because because they're normal too, right? It just seems to be a few countries that are not normal. So anyway, guys, look. That's pretty much it. Bit interesting. You can see some pictures of the consulate there, and us doing that bits and pieces as well. I've got some links for some forms there um, to ex explain like the form if you wanted to see the form that you you actually do, and the, the website, and probably the calculation as well to do your solvency. I think solvency is probably the better one for most people to have a, have a crack at. If you're over fifty, a lot easier. You can almost do it as almost like a retirement visa, and the requirements are a bit less. Um, but I'm not, I'm not over fifty. Obviously, look at this beautiful face. So, hey guys, look, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. We've got a lot more to come. This is only, this is only kind of really day one of, of, of the journey. We've been learning some Spanish and doing a few other things, trying to trying to give ourselves some survival skills, and we will keep you posted. So, I will talk to you later. All right, okay. Uh, buenas noches.